All right, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh Bahashom, Yahweh Shai Bahashom Rachaha Kodash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return and double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai and this is going to be a sit down lesson going into another misinterpretation of the holy scriptures which was done by Yahweh Sop himself from uh, IUIC okay and in a video that was uploaded by the uh, beloved brother Manak Zagba from South Carolina in that video they, um, that the beloved brother uploaded it shows Yahweh Sop in the video basically uh you know, trying to link Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, you know, to Revelation 13 and 16. You know, trying to make it seem like that, y'all will stop trying to make it seem like that Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, is a spiritual mark. Okay, and Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, that all the way down to 8 has nothing to do with any type of mark, period. So, what I'm going to do is, you know, I have some pictures here. I'm going to display them. As I as I have taken them while I had internet connection, and you know we're going to find out. Well, what you're going to find out is that Deuteronomy six verse four to eight has nothing to do with any type of mark. Okay. Um. So Deuteronomy chapter six verse four. You know, hear, O Israel. Yahweh, our God is one and thou shalt love Yahweh thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine mind and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children okay that word children which goes into the Hebrew word banyum which means sons Okay, and, and, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So <clears throat> he uses Deuteronomy 6 and 8 to say that, you know, this is talking about a spiritual mark, you know. You no, know, this, this, um, you know, these commandments is, the, you know, that 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 that's a spiritual mark in, in your head, and you know, and and in your hand. Well, let's do this right now. When you look up the definition for frontlets. Right, which is what I did. As you see right here in this picture, you see the word frontlets. And and um you see the word frontlets to your left. But now when you look to your right, you see the Hebrew word for frontlets, which is what? Tawa tapawat. Tawa tapawat. Okay. So what we're gonna do is look up the Hebrew word for frontlets. And let's see if it's talking about an actual spiritual mark in your mind. 
Okay, so here it is, the Hebrew word Tawa Tapawat. Okay, and when we go down to the to the um biblical lineage usage or biblical line usage, or uh, excuse me, when we go to the to the outline of biblical usage, what do we see right there? We see bands, we see phylacteries, we see frontlets, and we see we see marks, right? Now, in this case, when the Lord said that you shall bind them upon thine head and upon thy hand, this was speaking literal. Okay? So this is actually talking about what? Phylacteries. Which phylacteries was binded upon you using what? Bands. Okay? So the Hebrew, the Hebrew word there for frontlets is tawa tapawath, which means what? Bands, phylacteries, frontlets, right? And we, I, I even have some pictures showing you examples of what the Lord was talking about in Deuteronomy 6 and 8. If we come over here, here's an example of somebody who is, you know, now, I mean, I mean I'm not saying I mean, we, we don't know what nationality this guy is. You know, you, you can't just assume that somebody's nationality just by looking at him. But we, we see a picture of a guy here, right? That's binding what? His phylacteries as frontlets in between, in between his eyes. You see, you see back in the ancient world, this is what we did. Okay, this is what we did. We, 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 we would bind these various laws, statutes. We, we would bind these various laws, statutes, and commandments, you know. And, and, and to, you know, these little boxes so that, you know, wherever we went, we can open up the box. We can look up particular things and be like, oh, okay, so, you know. We're not supposed to do this. We're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to touch that. You know, we're not supposed to eat that. We're not supposed to go near that. You know, these things served as what? Reminders. Because we understood that back in the ancient world, we were not perfect, you know? And we also got to remember, there were what, 613 laws? 613 laws we had to keep? Who's going to remember, who's going to remember all 613 laws out the back? So you would need to have something on you that would, you know, that, that would help remind you of the way to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? And, and, and these little boxes um, that was binded by bands, what the world calls phylacteries, they, these little boxes act as carriers for holding the laws, the statutes, and the commandments in them. That way, when you needed to look up uh, something in particular, if you needed to, you know, be reminded if this was right or wrong you would go back to what the box that was binded around your forehead which acted as what your front lens you would go to the box that was binded on on, on your hand or, or on your arm as you see in this picture right here where where the laws the statutes and the commandments will be kept at okay there were instructions inside of these these uh the, these boxes, which acted as frontlets or, or phylacteries. So that's what Deuteronomy six and eight is talking about. It has nothing to do with with any type of mark. Okay. 
just like um just like the border of, of just like the border of ribbon of blue and, and, and um and, and having fringes on your garment they served as a reminder to tell you look remember to keep the law statutes and commandments okay because you got guys you know they'll wear fringes as if it, it, it's some kind of fashion statement no okay the border of blue the fringes served as a reminder to tell us look you got to keep the lord's law statutes and commandments because if you don't there's a judgment that comes with it that judgment could could uh, come could, can come in the form of you getting put to death it could come in the form of you getting your hand chopped off you know <laughs> it could come in the form of you know depending on whatever so that's exactly what the frontlets and the phylacteries act as. As you see right here, this guy has, has on frontlets and he has on phylacteries. Okay. And inside of the, the, the black box, well, inside of the black boxes that you see on him are what? The law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures. Well, I wouldn't say that he he has the law, statutes, and commandments in him. But back in the ancient world, when we actually wore these things, we had the law, statutes, and commandments inside of the boxes, which served as what? Instructions, reminders, guides on what to do while we were here on the face of the earth. So again, Deuteronomy 6 and 8 have nothing to do with a spiritual mark. It's not talking about an actual mark in your forehead or, or, or in your hand. So don't try to use that to say, well, see, look, so, 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 so if, if, you know, if, if, if it's a, a spiritual mark in your forehead or in your hand, well, when you go to Revelation 13 and 16, the, the, the mark of the beast has to be talking about sin because because uh, uh, Satan, the, the, the image of the beast, you know, he, he you know, he, he's going to tell you, look, you have to leave off from the ways of God and, and, you know, do sin. You know, so sin is cool, you know. I mean, you, you, you can eat pork. You could do it in your wife's mouth. You could teabag her. You know, you, you can commit adultery. You know, just, just have fun. Do, do as thou will. You know? So, you know, so this, this, this nigga's talking about sin. <laughs> the, 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 the mark in your forehead is basically basically believing that sin, sin is okay. You know, say, Satan's going to whisper something in your ear. You know, go out there, do it. You know you want to do it. Come on, come on. So simply believing that it's okay to do sin mean, means you, you, you got the, the mark in your forehead. Come on, man. Come on. Make it make sense. And then to say that, that the mark is in your hand, right? He'll sit there and try to tell you that, that the mark in your hand is you actually doing the sin. Nah, man. Everybody do sin every day. Okay. Revelation 13 verse 16 is a future prophecy that will indeed come upon the whole face of the earth like it tells you in Revelation, the third chapter, the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the face of the earth, okay? When you go to that word, the, upon the whole face of the world, to try them. When you go to that word, the world, the Greek word there is oikimeni, which means the whole inhabited earth. You see? Bam, look, I got another picture right here. Okay? Here you go, the frontlets and phylacteries. Check that out. Okay, you see that? A reminder. That's what the front lets, you know, that's what, you know, binding, you know, the, the laws, the law, statutes and commandments, you know, as front lets upon your head and upon thine hand. This is this, this is what it stood for right here. You physically binded these things on you to help to help keep you in the way. To serve you as a reminder of, of, of you know, 
because if you if you always had the law, statutes, and commandments with you, right? Then you can know what to do at all times, right? You wouldn't know that. Uh, no, no, I don't eat that. I don't. I don't go that way. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't touch that. You know, I don't. I don't eat that. I don't. I don't learn of those ways. I can be judged for it. The law, statutes, and commandments served as a reminder as what to do and what not to do here on the face of the earth. They acted as instructions from Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. Okay, like it tells you in the book of Proverbs, the, the law is a schoolmaster. Okay, now we're not going to be saved on keeping the laws. We keep the law, statutes, and commandments, which we can keep to the best of our ability. Okay, so Deuteronomy 6 and 8 have nothing to do with a mark. It's talking about frontlets and phylacteries. Now, in this generation, there is a such thing as a, 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 a circumcision of the mind. But being circumcised in the mind does not mean you're going to be saved. Because as it is written in uh, Second Esdras, the ninth chapter, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by what? And by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the sad pearls and shall see my salvation in my land for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Okay, so the elect is going to be saved by works and by faith. And those works come by what? By the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability. Okay. So, I mean, I don't want to make this video too long, you know. No, I just wanted to, you know, throw some edification out there on a Deuteronomy 6 and 8. You know, all of you false prophets that are breaking down the scriptures wrong, beware, because the Lord is going to judge you if you don't repent. With that, I'm going to say, Shalom to the, to the elect.